The Taken King is approaching, and much like the previous expansions, a lot of you want to know how you can best prepare yourselves for it, so let's talk. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that you are not going to have to prepare a whole lot. So first, let's talk about weapons and armor. Beyond exotics, basically everything that you have now will be pretty bad once you hit level 40 and start doing level 40 content, although starting out, it is more than fine, but you don't need to have high-end gear right now in order to enjoy the beginning of the Taken King. Your Prison of Elder sets, Crota sets, VOG sets, they're all eventually going to be outclassed, and if what Bungie says is true, outclassed very quickly. Now, don't go and delete all of your stuff just yet, because you do want to have at least one armor set for each of your characters to start yourself out in the Taken King. When patch 2.0 hits, which is before the Taken King, a lot of the light changes are going into effect, along with the additions of all the kiosks and all that stuff. Those light changes means Bungie will be applying your current level to your character on a per-character basis. So how are they determining what your level will be? Well, Bungie is going to look through all of your armor pieces and will put together a set of gear that gives you the highest level possible. Then, that level will be applied to your character. So if you have all level 34s, you'll be level 34 when 2.0 hits. I'm pretty sure that as long as you're above level 20 or 25, that that is what's going to happen to your character. Now, if you're the kind of person who does not want this to happen to them for whatever reason, and yes, I have had people ask me, I'm not sure what you can do to stop it from happening other than just deleting all of your gear, but I don't really recommend that, and I will just say right now that I'm not responsible for anything should you decide to do something crazy like that and something bad happens. But that's literally the only thing I can think of should you want to stop yourself from being automatically leveled up. Remember that if you do want to go through with such a thing, the Taken King content starts at level 25. Now your exotics are a slightly different story. Mark Noseworthy, who is an executive producer, posted on Twitter recently that if you have an exotic when 2.0 hits, it'll be in the blueprint vendor, and that anything before then is not guaranteed. So it sounds very much like the game is only going to start remembering that you had stuff that goes into a blueprint vendor starting with patch 2.0. That means do not get rid of your exotics, shaders, emblems, sparrows, or ships until 2.0 hits. Then you can micromanage. The next very big concern is your current Vanguard and Crucible marks. These will be turning into reputation commendations at a rate of 50 to 1. So for every 50 marks you have, you'll get one commendation. A commendation is used to gain a bunch of bonus reputation, 250 to be exact. So if all of your characters are maxed out on marks, that means 8 total commendations, which is 2,000 rep. With the Nightfall bonus, that's enough to gain a full level of faction reputation per character, but of course you can just transfer over your commendations to your other characters if you want to do that. However, you can also choose to spend those Vanguard and Crucible marks on materials. Cosmo confirmed that material exchanges still exist in the Taken King. They're available on the Vanguard Quartermaster at, I assume, the same trade rate, 20 for 10. So, right now, you can buy 400 total materials with 200 marks, that's 800 materials for 400 marks, and if you have full marks on all three characters, that's 2,400 materials, or 600 of each if you want to do that. So at full marks, you can get enough reputation to level a faction three times for three faction packages, or you can have 600 materials of each kind, which you choose is up to you, and of course you can do half and half, you don't need to go all in on either side. I'll probably go with a half and half scenario, but I have a lot of materials right now. Having a few commendations to grab some faction packages is not the worst idea in the world, and that brings me to my next point, edging factions. Faction edging is going to be important once again, but not as important as quickly. With the new faction system, you're only going to be able to pick one faction to level up in week one. Vanguard and Crucible you'll be able to level quickly, but you can't level Dead Orbit, Future War Cult, and New Monarchy in the same week. You can only pick one of them. If I lost you at what the hell faction edging is, what I mean by that is that you should get your factions super close to the edge of hitting the next level, so that way you can turn in one bounty, one commendation, or do a turn in at a faction leader and get a faction package. It's a nice way to just get a little head start. You'll also be able to turn stuff in for reputation as well, and this includes heavy ammo synthesis. Heavy ammo synths, despite being the most expensive, are among the easiest to come by. 
Xur sells them at a rate of 5 for one strange coin. You might want to stock up a bunch for faction turn-ins. Bungie has not said how much reputation you will get for a turn-in, nor have they mentioned if all turn-ins will give the same amount of reputation. Another thing is Focused Light. Focused Light comes from those Red Bull codes. They get you 50% increased experience for 30 minutes. A lot of people want to combine this with turning in a ton of bounties and redeeming a ton of public event packages to race to level 40, which is fine if you want to do that. However, what I would recommend is that you do your subclass quest first. Get your subclass first, then equip it, and then turn in all of your stuff with a focused light so that you can get a big boost to your subclass as well. Do not turn everything in right off the bat. Wait until you have the subclass at the very least. Public event packages net you 2,500 experience per package, and you can hold 20 of them in your postmaster, but note that I believe if you get a faction package, it'll overwrite the public event package. Public event packages are earned from doing a public event. The first one you do every day gets you a package, so if you start now, you can still get two weeks worth of packages for the Taken King. Now for some more minor things. Three of Coins is an item being sold by Xur which can increase your chance of getting an exotic when you kill an Ultra. I assume they'll cost strange coins to buy, so make sure that you do all of your weeklies. Also note that strange coins are being removed from the weekly heroic. In fact, the weekly heroic itself is being removed from the game, and in its place will be the Vanguard Heroic Strike playlist. Obviously, that leaves the question, where are we going to get strange coins from? Well, they'll be dropping from, quote, other activities, and you'll be getting them from stuff like the faction packages more often, so don't worry about that too much. But, while strange coins are easy to get right now, you should go do your weeklies. Next, armor materials are getting combined into one single material. No more will Titans, Hunters, and Warlocks have to manage their own unique material. Instead, they are unified, which is awesome. I'm more than willing to bet that you'll be able to turn in your current materials for these materials at a Quartermaster. Probably the Vanguard, since they seem to be dumping all of the exchanges on the Vanguard Quartermaster. Will these be one-to-one -one exchange rate? My guess is yes. What would be even better is if all of my materials just automatically turn into these new materials, that would be totally fine with me. So if you want, you can stock up on armor materials without much worry. Next, it's probably a good move to pick up a couple of exotic shards. You probably have some already, and if you don't, it's not a big deal, but you buy year one exotics from the blueprint vendors at the cost of one exotic shard and some glimmer, so it's not a bad idea to have a couple on deck. Then of course we have the whole saving packages and engrams thing. If you earn a faction package during the House of Wolves and wait to open it for when the Taken King comes out, that package will contain House of Wolves items. The items are rolled for when you earn the package. It'll be the same with engrams. If you have a legendary engram that you earned in the House of Wolves, it'll be a House of Wolves item. Now if you save Cryptarch packages, I've heard that the engrams themselves aren't rolled until you actually open the package, meaning theoretically you could save Cryptarch packages and open them up in Taken King, and the engrams will roll Taken King items. That's only a theory though. Maybe Bungie changed something, maybe not. Finally, you are going to want motes of light, as many as you can get. They can be used to level up weaponry, but we haven't seen that ability in action just yet. Still, if you can get motes of light while you're playing, get them. You don't need to go crazy farming for them or anything, but, you know, get them where you can. And that's all I got for you guys on how to prepare for the Taken King. Not really a ton of things to do, it might have seemed like a lot, but it's really not that bad. Most of you can probably do absolutely nothing and be fine for the Taken King. There isn't as much prep required, much like there wasn't much required for the House of Wolves. If there's anything else that comes up, I'm sure I'll put any updates into a video in the future or in the description of this one. Anyway guys, that's all for me. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.